The Foundation by Isaac Asimov is one of the most important books ever written for the sci-fi genre by one of the greatest authors the genre ever saw. Isaac Asimov really put forth something that has gone forth to be looked at as a pillar for the genre as a whole, respected in literary circles thin and outside of the sci-fi fantasy lens. Now, this book did not win over its audience to the ways you might be thinking, especially if you are not familiar with hard science fiction. It lacks and the beautiful writing you might see in other sci-fi contemporaries like Ray Bradbury, and it doesn't exactly immerse you in the human experience of a book like Hyperion. Instead, Foundation is about the concept at the core of it, which makes it extremely hard to adapt because this is not something our Asimov was trying to whisk you away in a wonderful galactic empire in terms of its immersion. Instead, he wanted to just explore the idea of what if through math we were able to prove the empire would fall, there would be a time of great war, and the utopia that was lived in wouldn't last. Apple has decided to tackle this in what, through the episode one, has struck me far more as a remix than an adaptation. This is maybe the most mixed bag I have ever reviewed, because there are elements I love in this pilot, and there are things that I really hate but they still kind of line up with the book because as I spoke on, Isaac Asimov wasn't exactly the greatest writer in terms of his technical ability. There are countless other sci-fi fantasy authors who write far more beautifully and in a way that'll draw in the reader deeper than he ever did. And so seeing the Apple TV show deliver its own exposition often in, in a remarkably clunky way feels somehow right, but is still something worth criticizing. I found one character's early introduction to almost exclusively serve the purpose of, I'm going to tell you things now, to the point where the character actually delivers a line of dialogue to our main character. Hey, um, I'm going to stop telling you things because I know you better now and the audience is caught up. The last party didn't put in there, but the first party did, and wow. This character is then later introduced again to try and justify their existence, but even then it feels a bit forced. This is symptomatic of a larger issue, which is where I think the writing for the Foundation show is about on par with Asimov's writing as a whole. The only bigger challenge is when you have the medium of television people are going to be less forgiving. And it would be easy to brush off the show from here, but the problem is it has many redeeming elements. First and foremost, I was in love with the performances. With not having that strong a vision of the characters that Asimov put to the page, I wasn't really expecting to care about the characters here much at all, because it's not like I'm seeing Kaladin brought forth from the Stormlight Archive. I'm, I'm seeing some people who, after you put down the book, you probably aren't gonna remember that well, because. Asimov wasn't about making really lovable characters. If you want that, I recommend James A. Corey or Dan Simmons, but I don't remember any character Asimov ever wrote that I really love. Here though, Harry and Gail, yeah, I'm in. And the representation of the three generation emperors, well, it bugged me at first. By the end of the episode, I was like, actually, this is good, and I like what they are doing. A, they are they have moments where their writing isn't awesome, but conceptually it's landing. And that's another really big strength of this remix slash adaptation of the foundation. I do feel the actual premises, ideas that drove Isaac Asimov's series actually simmering to the surface and coming to life. This is only a first episode. And I'm already like, okay, there was a lot of exposition dumping and just putting a trash bag full of, here's the situation, whap, on the viewer. But at the end, I felt very well set up for what is to come. It wasn't a smooth journey to get there, but you got me there. For an example of like how this writing is not the most nuanced thing on the planet, where there's a thing at the beginning where this is a clear setup for the morals of one of the emperors. And what they do is they find an artist who read a book they don't like them reading. And so there's this kind of over the top mustache twirling, oh, I'm sorry, the idea's in your head. And so they suddenly shoot this person and kill him. And it's like, okay, there's a thing called subtlety and I don't think you, you did it there. But it gets the idea across and that's what we're getting here. 
And then the shallowest praise of all, but damn it, I gotta say it, aside from a few wonky shots here and there, this did look impressive, especially with some huge incident that happens in the very end, acting as a catalyst for characters moving to the way they need to get to by the end of the episode. It looked downright stunning. I watched this on a 4K OLED, and by God am I glad I did. It was awesome. Now, my theory on how this show could be done better is to remove a couple hard sci-fi fans from the writer's room and allow a couple other more typical TV writers for high concept stuff to come in. I'm purely going on conjecture. I don't know what the writing situation room is like, but it feels that way to me, so that way a lot of the dialogue and exposition could be smoothed out. And on top of that, the most obvious ask a fan can ask for, but damn it, I gotta say it, yeah, episode one felt very rushed, like they had to get through a lot of things because they have an episode limit and a budget limit, and those two factors made this episode have to carry far too much. So I'm excited for where the show's going to go from here. It's a bumpy start that makes me optimistic. I can see it improve while still having a reserve. Yeah, I see the problems here at the beginning and it could be a lot worse also. I'm not one over. I see a pathway to success and a pathway to failure and I'm, I'm fence sitting in the middle. Okay, something I forgot to say last night when I recorded this review, and I do want to reiterate, and it's a genuinely impressive feat of the show, this does feel galactic. The vistas are extremely well realized, the location traveling, and the feeling you get from the main character as they are getting on their first journey to go throughout this galactic empire is absolutely landing, and the fact that they were able to make me feel that in this pilot episode is tremendous praise. This actually did manage to feel on a galactic scale justifying the foundation, so despite all the criticisms, I do want to put that very positive praise in here. I don't know if it's a good idea or not to give a number rating to a pilot episode, but I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. It had clear problems that I think are going to bug people, especially if they're not used to the way that hard sci-fi often does handle its exposition and dialogue, and it's also going to have problems for Isaac Asimov fans who are going to be surprised by what they are getting. That being said, it's accomplishing being something different. This does not feel like anything else on TV, and I'm definitely going to watch the second episode, so kudos on that front. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, though. Do you love this adaptation of The Foundation, or are you still in the camp of it's unadaptable? There's no way they'll get it right. And what would they have to do to get it right if that's the case in your mind? Let me know all that in the comments down below. That's a big ask. Anyway, like and subscribe if you're not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And pre-order my book, Rebels Creed, available now on U.S. Amazon. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.